Hello everyone. Um, the first thing I want to, to tell you uh, that you should look at Modo um, for the module 24A and just look through the slides. Okay, please go through the slides. There are no any problems. It just walks you through different um, uh, through different uh, energy scales and the length scales of electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, and the frequency scales as well. It discusses gamma rays, X-rays, ultraviolet, infrared, visible light, microwaves, and radio waves. So, and in general, there are a lot of interesting figures, and uh, I want you to look at this. Uh, there are no problems, and I'm not going to discuss this in details in class anyway. Uh, so, but nevertheless, you, you should look at it. Okay, you should understand uh, what, what are the higher frequency gamma rays or say radio waves. So what is the highest frequency? You know, some of the problems on the exam might be about it. Okay, so I want you to go and look at it. Please do. Uh, other than that, we'll proceed in the same fashion. Now we will be solving uh, so a few problems over here. But uh, first I would like to start with a brief history of physics 212. Okay, brief history to the to the point right now. Okay, so what did we do? We first considered the static charges, right? And we discussed the electromagnetic fields, uh, Coulomb law, you know, the forces between static charges. Um, then we actually mo uh, went further, okay? And we started discussing moving charges. And the, we discussed specifically that moving charges produce electric and magnetic fields, yeah? Uh, and something was new, like for example, the magnetic field uh, was producing uh, was producing the um, was produced, for example, by the currents or by moving charges. Okay. Now, uh, finally, um, uh, we might also discuss that uh, acceleration charges produce electric magnetic fields, and they also produce electromagnetic waves. Okay. And today we'll discuss electromagnetic waves. Okay, so by the way, atomic transitions also produce electromagnetic waves. So here is, for example, a plot of uh, the electromagnetic wave over here. Um, you can uh, see this plot in multiple different ways. So this is, for example, will be my electric field, this is the magnetic field. And this will uh, uh, also define uh, the way the, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, um, this wave propagates. Okay, how do we do this? We use, of course, the right-hand rule. Um, but for that, I will have an actual problem. So one can actually uh, also simulate electromagnetic waves uh, in different number of dimensions, for example, in, two, in 2D, in 3D, and it becomes more and more uh, complicated to understand what's going on over here. Okay, I'm not going to concentrate on any of this. We are not going to uh, uh, have it, um, or we are not going to consider this. Um, instead, um, uh, let me just uh, skip to the actual problem. And here the, I have the problem for you, uh, which is related to, uh, to the problem of electromagnetic wave uh, propagation in vacuum. Please read the problem, okay? Pause the video and try to, for, uh, to solve this problem by yourself first. Okay, I hope you did it. Um, so, <clears throat> uh, this is pretty straightforward um, calculation, so don't overthink it. Um, and the calculation is the following. So, we are given the distance uh, that uh, the star is uh, that far away. Yeah, the star that far away. Okay, uh, next, what we also know, we know the speed of light. Okay, we know the speed of light. So what is the speed of light? Well, the speed of light is defined uh, by how fast the electromagnetic waves um, propagate. And there was a relation to um, epsilon zero and mu zero yeah, in uh, your pre-class uh, uh, video. Uh, but uh, for us, what's important is uh, actually its value. So the speed of light is given by three times 10 to the positive eight meters divided by second. Okay, the speed of light, usually it's denoted by C. Okay, but in this case, I will just write this in this form. Okay, and uh, 
uh, all I need to find is uh, how long this uh, this speed propagated uh, uh, from this uh, supernova until it reached us. Well, there is no acceleration, and therefore, using the uh, equations that we had uh, in two eleven, we know that the speed is given by the distance divided by time, and this I can solve for time, right? So. From this equation it follows that time will be given by the dist distance divided by the velocity and uh, next I will just substitute the numbers so it's 1.9 times 10 to the positive uh, 10 to the positive 20 meters divided by 3 times 10 to the positive 8 meters per second while doing this simple math using my calculator just dividing these numbers I obtained um, 6.9 3 uh, times 10 to the positive um, 11, uh, 10 to the positive 11 10 to the positive 11 seconds oh, God, this is a huge number so and therefore we want to convert this into uh, into years um, well, we can do this um, in, multi, in in a couple of steps. So we will stop that this is 6.3 seconds, okay? And then what I need to do, I want to multiply this number essentially by a unit, okay? By one, just by one, okay? But I want to write this in the following way. So it's one hour, okay, one hour divided, so how many? Um, uh, how many seconds are in one hour? Well, 300, 36, okay, 3600, 3600 seconds, okay? So I did nothing, it's just one, right? But I am trying to massage this uh, number of seconds. Oh, by the way, I, I lost 10 to the positive 11, 10 to the positive 11 seconds. Okay, so I'm trying to massage it into, into days and then years. Okay, so the next step would be that I will just write that one day. So in one day there are 24 hours. And finally, there are in one year, in one year there are 365 days. And then I can see that, uh, so you see I strategically construct uh, this in such a way, again, so uh, every factor here is just one, right? It's just one, so I have the same number, but at the same time I can see uh, that if I open up, multiply these uh, things together, they, then they can see that hours completely cancel, All right? So hour, hour cancel, day cancels, and second cancels, so I will end up with 6.3, 6.3 times 10 to the positive 11, 1 divided by 300, by 3600, times 1 divided by 24, times 1 divided by 365 years. Okay, well, now we can use our calculators. So approximately I got 20,000 years. Okay, so this answer. Uh, D, uh, we also call this, uh, since the light was propagating, we also call, call this uh, 20,000 light years. Okay, so we also call it 20,000 light years. All right. Okay, here's an example for you. So in this example, what we said is um, that at a given instant, the electric field of the electromagnetic wave points in the y direction. And I already uh, drawn over here, so this is electric field. Okay, so what next? Uh, then they also said that the magnetic field points in negative z direction. Okay, I, I, I drew this axis over here, so and this is my and this is that, uh, let me use the other color, uh, this is my magnetic field, it's in negative z direction. 
to also simplify it a little bit, I will also um, do a two-dimensional drawing where the z-axis points towards me, so this is z-axis, and my electromagnetic wave then will be, so this is uh, y and this is x, uh, my electromagnetic, uh, the electric field will be pointing this way, okay, and the magnetic field will be pointing into the plane. Okay, so this is electric field, and this is the magnetic field. Uh, what we need to find, we need to find the direction of the propagation of the wave. So how do we do this? First of all, we align our hand in the direction of the electric field in a such a way that we can bend the fingers in the direction of magnetic field. Okay, so we first align our hand in the direction of electric field, so like this. So essentially I put my uh, palm on the screen of the of this of my device, right? So it looks like this. So my, my fingers, okay, so this is my hand. Yeah, pretty ugly hand. It didn't really work out. So let me try again. So these are my this is my hand, okay. And the palm is facing down. Okay, so and then I will be able to uh, bend my fingers, right? So I will bend my fingers, so I will see it this way. So I bend the, the fingers into uh, the screen. Okay. And then the thumb, okay, so this thumb will point in the direction of the propagation of that wave. Okay, so in this case, the propagation will be in this direction. Okay. So which is uh, negative x-axis. And here I also uh, drew this uh, figure in three dimensions. All right, um, negative x-axis. Okay, here I have a question for you. Please pause the video and um, first try to do this, uh, this problem by yourself. Okay, what we said is that electric field of this electromagnetic wave points in the negative x direction. Okay, so that's the electric field. Points in the direction opposite to the x axis. Very good. The magnetic field points in the negative y direction. Okay, so magnetic field po points in the negative y direction. So this is the magnetic field. Okay, so that's the electric field and this is the magnetic field. What we need to find, uh, we need to find the uh, direction of the propagation of the wave. Okay, very good. We need to find the direction of the propagation of the wave. Um, Again, so we do the same procedure. We align first our hand, right, with the uh, electric field, and then we bend our fingers in the direction, of our four fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so that would look like this. So this is our, 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 our hand, so we will be seeing this, so this thumb, these are all the fingers. So in this, uh, this is our hand, then we bend our fingers, right, so we bend our fingers like this. Okay, in the direction of the magnetic field, and then the thumb uh, will define the direction of the propagation. So and in this case, it's positive z direction. Positive z direction. So let's just plot this the direction of the propagation. We will be in the positive z direction. Okay, I hope you got it right. In the positive z direction. Okay, here I have a question uh, for you over here. Here we actually need to compute things, so please use your calculators. Okay, so what is given in this problem? So in this problem, the frequency is given. It is 19,000 megahertz. Okay, so mega means it's 10 to the positive 6 hertz. Okay, the frequency is given. Uh, 
what else is given? Well, we know also the speed of light. The speed of light is three, ta uh, three times three times 10 to the positive eight meters divided by second. Very nice. Um, and finally, uh, we can use the equation which relates uh, this quantities together. So it's the velocity divided by the frequency. Okay, and we just substitute the numbers. So hertz is the same as one over second, right? Um, so just to remind you, so it's three times 10 to the positive eight. So it's velocity meters divided by second divided by the frequency, which is nine, which is 19,000 times 10 to the positive six um, hertz. And hertz is, is again, is, is the same as one over second. And you can see that the seconds will cancel in this uh, in the units and you will end up with something which is measured only in meters. So it's a good cross check that you, you, you actually use that equation correctly. Okay, and now you can substitute the numbers and compute and the final result. So I actually obtained one 15.8, yeah, 0.158 meters. Uh, okay, so, or in other words, this is 15.8 um, centimeters. Okay, here is another question. Well, this is just an answer, I'm sorry. Uh, so let's move on. So here is another question for you. Please pause your video and solve this question. All right, so. Again, this is just uh, application of one single equation, uh, but this equation is pretty um, is pretty important. Uh, this equation tells us that the ratio of the electric field uh, to magnetic field in electromagnetic waves is given by uh, well c or the same as speed of light. Yeah, c is the speed of light. Let me use this notation right now. Uh, very good. And actually, this equation can be solved either for b or for e or you know, Okay, for C is not because the C is actually not. So, but let's solve this for E because we need to find the map, uh, amplitude of electric field. Okay, so electric field and um, the amplitude of the electric field will be then given by C times the magnetic field. And the magnetic field is given in this problem, so we'll just substitute the numbers. It's three times, three times uh, 10 to the positive eight meters divided by second times, well, and the magnetic field is five times 10 to the negative seven Tesla. Okay, so this math we can do without a calculator, of course. So three times five is 15. Okay, it's 10 to the positive eight times 10 to the negative seven. It will be just 10 to the positive one, right? Um, and we know that at the end of the day, you will obtain volts divided by meter. Or these are the units of the electric field, yeah? So I'll just simplify this. It will be 150 volts divided by meter. 150 volts divided by meter. Okay, very good. So now I have the question for you over here. Please pause the video and solve this question. Okay, so here we have to kind of backtrack of what we know. So what do we know? So we know that uh, the Let's start first from drawing. So this is y axis, this is x axis, y x, and z axis is just directly towards us, right? Okay. We have said that the electromagnetic wave propagates in the negative uh, x direction, so it's opposite uh, uh, to the x axis. Okay. And the electric field. Electric field of the wave points in the negative z direction. So in my figure over here, the electric field will point into the screen. Electric field. Okay. In what direction does the magnetic field point at this instant? Mm, pretty interesting problem. So what we are going to do, we, we can try a couple of uh, a couple of ways. Okay. So magnetic field, of course, will be either pointing along the y-axis or or in opposite to the y-axis, right? It has to be perpendicular to the electric field and it has to be perpendicular to the velocity of the propagation. Okay, so there are two different scenarios and we can try 
right? So again, so two different scenarios is that the magnetic field is either like that or like this. Okay, it has to be perpendicular again to E and V at the same time. Both of them, both of these candidates are perpendicular to V and E at the same time. Okay, but now we need to select the the one which would work, and uh, for that now uh, we can uh, try uh, both of these directions and see that the only one direction will work, you know, and this direction is negative y axis. Okay, how do I know that? I will put my fingers in the direction of the electric field, so it's into the screen, my hand, it's into the screen, then I will bend it to, uh, in the my fingers in the direction of the electric field, and my thumb will define me the direction of the wave propagation. Yeah? All right, um, so negative y-axis. So now I have the final question for you over here. Please pause the video and solve this problem. Okay, so the first thing here is actually to draw the, the diagram. Okay, so this is my ground. Uh, okay, this is the ground and there is a tree here. Okay, very good. So we are said that electromagnetic wave emitted by the radio antenna is propagating horizontally north. Okay, horizontally north. So let me say that this is north. Okay. So it means that the electromagnetic wave uh, propagates in this direction. So that's V. Very good. So, well, that means that this is south, okay? And uh, of course, then uh, it also means that this is east. It's out of the plane, and this is will be direction of west. Okay, very good. So I have all that set up. Okay, so, and also there is up and down, right? So there is also up, so that's up, and that's down, just in case, yeah. Okay, very good, uh, I had all this set up, uh, so I'm continuing the uh, further. So the electric field component of the base is pointing up. Okay, very good, so <laughs> indeed I needed that. So electric field points up. Okay, what's direction? Um, is the um, magnetic field component of that wave. Mm, very good. So, uh, was, so, uh, again, so the uh, electric magnetic field has to be perpendicular to both E and V. It means that uh, the magnetic field is either pointing out of the page or into the page. Okay, so there are two possibilities for the magnetic field. Okay, now, so let's try them both. Okay, so... Um, Let's start from uh, the one pointing into the screen. So if it points, so first of all, I put my my palm, my hand uh, along the electric field, and then I um, curl my fingers, okay, or bend my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field. So my fingers will be looking into the uh, page, okay. So and uh, my thumb will point in the direction of the propagation. So and in this case. For this case, I will I got the, uh, the direction of propagation, uh, which doesn't to, towards south, which doesn't coincide with what we are said. Well, okay, that means that we're excluding that um, that solution, and we are left with the um, magnetic field pointing out of the page. But to be safe, we can also cross check that is indeed the case. So I will put uh, the um, my fingers in the direction of the electric field. I have to rotate my hand so that I can bend my fingers in the direction of the magnetic field now. And indeed, I got uh, this direction of the propagation. Okay, so towards north. Oh, well, okay, very good. So that's the answer, which means it's east. Which means it's east. Which means it's east. Okay, uh, that's all uh, for uh, today. Um, there will be a, a Zoom class on uh, Friday, okay, um, it will be recorded, um, but I would prefer that you will be there, but nevertheless, it will be recorded, so if you miss it, you will always um, uh, be able to uh, go back and take a look at it. Thank you very much.